So we're going to introduce what we call the Moore's circle for stress. And the Moore circle is a is a a little bit abstract, but it is a nice graphical tool that we can use to understand the state of stress in the material. So we talked about earlier how at any point we can, in, in the three-dimensional world, we can simplify, we can, the, the state of stress is is three components okay but we have to be in a really these are acting in a very specific orientation there's only one way only one sort of reference frame that that we can simplify stress state down to three numbers any other case we've got um, we would also have shear stresses acting on in um, in planes perpendicular to these vectors Okay, so the Moore circle helps us deal with that situation um, and answer the question, what is the stress state on an arbitrarily oriented plane? Or we'll just say arbitrary plane. Okay. So Let's just kind of go back to two dimensions here, okay? So we, we're gonna imagine that we've chosen some orientation where um, sigma one and sigma three are acting on these perpendicular surfaces. Of course, um, sigma one, two, and three are always um, perpendicular to each other. But we're gonna take some, some arbitrary surface here, which we're going to define by the angle theta. Okay, so this is a surface that is not, this is going to be, because it's not oriented perpendicular to these principal stresses, it's going to, it's going to be feeling a normal stress, and it's going to be feeling um, at least one shear stress. In the in the two-dimensional, we're, we're kind of looking at a two-dimensional plane of the paper. So in the plane of the paper, there's only one shear stress, okay? So the question that the Moore circle answers is, if we know sigma one and sigma three, we can uh, quickly estimate what the shear stress tau and the normal stress are, okay, for any, for any angle theta. Okay, that's that's what the more strut more circle does, and uh, among other things, it turns out that so we it turns out that we can that there are equations for if we know sigma one and three we can we can solve for the normal stress and I'm going to write these equations down even though we're not going to uh, ever use them in this class. Okay, but they're just good to good to um, know that they exist. And they also could be a way to 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 check your work with the Moore circle. Some people are more are more comfortable with the equations. So, so these are the equations that that describe um, shear stress and normal stress. It turns out they are also the equations for a circle. Okay, so that allows us to make a plot where we have axes of normal stress and shear stress. Okay, so think about that for a moment. Okay. This is a strange space that we're in, entering into. Um, and so principal stresses in this space are, they, they were defined as 
um, that that one orientation that in a three-dimensional stress field where um, there's no shear stress. Okay, so they're going to be they're going to just be on this line, two points in this line. So sigma one is defined as the largest stress, so it's going to be furthest from the origin, and then this one will be sigma three. Okay, so these are points where there's a, the normal stress has a magnitude, but the, the shear stress is zero. And then the Mohr circle does something like this. And I, I'm going to try that again. Okay, It's supposed to go through that point. I can do it. All right. OK, so that's supposed to be a circle. Um, this would be the center of the circle. And so the center um, so, so right away, um, even actually before drawing the circle, we could notice that we, um, we defined sigma 1 minus sigma 3 as something. Um, so that distance, sigma 1 minus sigma 3, that's what we call the differential stress. Okay, so and that, and we said that differential stress is the thing that, that causes um, most of the deformation that we're thinking about, um, faulting and folding and squeezing of rocks. Okay, so the larger the circle then, you can sort of get a sense, the bigger the circle, the more sort of damage that can be done. And, but let's introduce these concepts here, okay? So we measure on the circle, we measure theta by by, by moving, we talk about points being on, on the diameter of the circle. So a point here, and this angle here is actually double theta. It's two theta, OK? So any point along the diameter of the circle represents some orientation of this plane. So if we started if we started with a horizontal plane where theta is zero, we would be right here. Okay? So you can you can kind of imagine that. Imagine theta going down to zero, then the the normal stress that was that, that plane was feeling, well we already said what that was. That's sigma one. Okay. So so for 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 theta equals um, zero, which is also the same as um, two theta equaling zero. Okay, so right here, the normal stress equals sigma one, and the shear stress is zero. Okay, that should. That should make sense, okay? And here's another um, interesting case. Imagine if if we had theta be ninety, okay? So that would be that would be this that would be this plane going in a, a vertical plane here. So theta equals ninety. Well, that would be that's a vertical plane here, but on this diagram, we put in a 90 times 2. Um, so that's 2 theta equals 180. So that's all the way over here. That is theta equals sigma, or sorry, sigma equals sigma 3. Normal stress that, that the vertical plane feels, well, we already knew that. That's, that's just going to be. Um, sigma 3. And of course, there's no shear stress on that plane either. You can see that the coordinates of this point are um, have it at, at um, along that the x axis here. Okay, so so far we really haven't um, done anything too fancy, but let's try another one. Let's try this point. Okay, so this would be the point 
where the, sh the of any orientation that we could make here, as we as we kind of changed uh, the angle theta and to to see what normal and shear stresses that are experienced by the plane, um, this one would have the highest shear stress, right? So as we're moving up here, we get there, and then we start decreasing again. So so that would be theta equals. Um, Shouldn't be an equal sign there for theta equals 45, which is the same as 2 theta equals 90. Okay, so this angle here in that case would be 90 degree angle, which is the same in real space theta here of being 45. Okay, so at that condition, at this point there, um, we could say that the shear stress is is the maximum it will be at any orientation. Okay, so we really, um, when we're thinking about the the uh, Moore circle, we want to have that sort of connection to what real to real the real world. Okay, so think about. Sigma one acting down, sigma three vertical, and then some plane. And the um, so the plane of interest. We earlier we talked about okay, we define theta as relative to some horizontal surface. We could also think as theta as if we draw the the normal to the plane of interest, this is also theta. Okay, so the angle between sigma one and the normal to the plane is um, is theta. So if we have a, a theta of um, about thirty, so let's say that's sigma one. So let's say that's about a thirty degree angle. On the Moore circle, um, that would be two theta is sixty, so it'd be it'd be a this would be a sixty degree angle. So if you wanted to know about the stress state on this plane, you would go up up to sixty degrees. <laughs>